if you guys were to never do Jewets again, um, at least you take back something that's going to help you uh, protect yourself on the streets someday. Okay. Um, so the first concept that we, I think the only concept that we're actually going to go over today is connection. Um, connection occurs in many forms, but to put it simply, it is basically taking the slack out of anything that you do. Okay. Uh, taking the slack out of any system so that any sort of force that you intend to transfer, it's transferred as optimally as possible and none of it is going away in losses like sound and heat and whatnot. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's say trying to push a boulder, I would have to position myself first optimally in order to like transfer the force. I need to get my hands onto the boulder. That would be connecting to the boulder. Next, I would also have to like engage my back muscles and leg muscles to push. That would be creating form tension and that is connection to oneself. And lastly, we're going to be connecting to the floor so that I can push off of it. Okay. Um, a simple example that I'll, uh, that maybe we'll, we'll begin with is I'd like everyone to try shrimping on the floor. Okay, so that we understand connection to the floor and that's pretty much what we're going to be going over. Um, so let me have Arjun, uh, if you can show what a shrimp looks like. With my shoulder? Up to you, whatever you want to do, doesn't matter. Okay, all right, pause there. Uh, and that movement can be linked up, but for now, I just like people to get onto the ground and try to jackknife into that position, okay? Just try this out and then we'll build on it, okay? It's, it's not a workout or anything. I just want you to understand what you're effectively doing. Okay, that, that's good enough, okay? At the tail end of the movement, there's slippage. That's what we want to avoid, okay? So anytime I'm using the floor to fight, I need to be drawing energy from the floor constantly. Okay, so if I complete my movement this way, I have no more energy to draw because I've killed my movement completely. Okay, so I'm not planted enough. So I'm going to stay on the floor and move. So we're going to look at this from a standing perspective, from a basic self-defense perspective. Uh, you have to be able to defend yourself against strikes. That's one. Uh, we'll ignore that for now uh, because things tend to escalate rather quickly when strikes are involved. Uh, but the other thing that we'd also like to prevent ourselves from essentially being preyed upon is through dragging and pushing. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at today predominantly in how to hold your ground and then build off of that. Uh, but for now, uh, I'm going to try and push you or move you around. Prevent me from doing it. It's kind of hard, okay? I want you to change something. I want you to get into a squat, engage your hips. Okay, so I'm constantly connected to the floor. All right, so squat down, engage your hips. Yes, so now I'm gonna try to move you. And you can move your feet, it's okay. But all you're gonna do is essentially crab walk to try and prevent yourself from being tipped over. Because once this happens, once this happens, the amount of energy that you'll put in to get back up is easy to manipulate. So get back up, so then I can manipulate into the side and then down again. So that gets worse and worse. So we just want to stay and move in this crab walk for now. Okay, so get there. Crab walk. So now I can't bend him because he's constantly connected to the floor. So if this was self-defense and somebody's trying to push you, you have to hold your ground by actually connecting to the ground physically. Okay, so let's everybody partner up. I want people of similar weight to go with each other because otherwise the things can get skewed pretty quick. So try it with someone your own size. And when you do continue your training, progressively try it against somebody bigger so that you understand the subtleties of it. Okay, so let's partner up. <clears throat> Connect to the flow, more. Try and push and pull. Okay, try and keep your chest more upright. There we go. Nice, there's a bit of a lean happening here. So if you notice, so let's so go, go against me. So now I can pull you, you see how that happened? Yeah. Reason being there's a lean. I want you to completely just get into a squat as best you can and engage your glute. Yeah, so now when I try to push you, I can't pull you back because you're not leaning against me, okay? So we're gonna to get to a lean in a sec, but for now, try and avoid at all costs to have any sort of commitment in the position, yeah? 
for now avoid call it eyes it's 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 kind of redundant a call it eye wouldn't really help right now uh we're just going with pushing and pulling just to understand base nothing else okay we want to get our training partner confident in moving his feet under him while maintaining the same posture okay so anytime you feel yourself going on to your toes that's going to be a problem so i'm actually trying to crab walk and move as little as possible while maintaining the posture so try not to let your upper body tip because then it's an eventuality that i'm going to get onto my toes yeah yes into offensive movement okay uh, so right now you prevented yourself from being pulled and pushed this goes in multiple facets so for example if someone were to try and pull me by my arm you would immediately squat and get this posture and they would not be able to pull you okay so i want you guys to spend some time thinking about it obviously uh, right now we we just made it about pulling and pushing but all of this still holds true if someone were to grab you by the arm it's the same posture that you're going to as you okay um, and that itself is going to like put people off because mostly they expect you to tip over but the minute this happens then then you can work grip fighting and so on okay um, <clears throat> so we're going to build that into offensive work and i'm going to place both of my hands on my training partner's chest he he can resist okay but as of now just keep it for about maybe 40 to 60% resistance you're not completely trying to like demotivate him but you're giving him resistance otherwise this would not work so as he resists i'm just connecting to the floor and pushing with choppy steps okay so it should be difficult for him to fight back uh as opposed to me trying to walk him down this way and suddenly i find myself getting collapsed because i'm not using the flow effectively so he hip, heavy hips walking him down okay just learning to do that let's start with that learn to push learn to use the flow to walk okay pushing back by trying to get hands on you in some way he might try to get his hands on my chest and you see how i'm getting pushed back now because he's starting to connect to me so i'm going to now rid that connection off so his hands come on me i clear it and i continue pushing and i go back to the chest clear go back to the chest clear go back to the chest constantly doing this okay every time you feel a hand come in i clear it off i'm just going over the top clearing pushing while i hold my ground i'm not leaning back to do this okay so we're pushing clear 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 okay this constantly walking in not not getting up onto my toes as i'm working not starting to go here because now i can get thrown into that space okay but if i'm just here if he tries to like drop suddenly and open up that space i'm still there pushing him okay i should not suddenly feel like i'm going to fall yeah let's go exactly toes bad for you holding ground and just clearing so is it one thing now is people are fighting on the back foot we haven't got there yet so which means as he pushes i'm not fighting back here okay i'm the one moving forward with it clearing moving forward clearing moving forward okay don't fight backwards so so you're pushing her arms come in i push it against her body and then i go back to the grip uh if he's completely on my chest too clearing may be a bit difficult okay so there's a little bit of anticipation now that i expect you guys to have where you start pushing the arm comes in and it goes okay so that way i don't have to clear two arms that would just be a lot of work at any point one arm is easier to clear so as soon as an arm comes in i'm clearing push back now this arm comes in clear push back push back okay so at almost at any point in time i'm only removing one arm that way i can maintain my push while i work okay what's the other preference on which arm you're using to clear otherwise uh, not to uh not really to be honest it could be so preemptive that i catch the wrist or it could be a little later than that where i have to kind of clear it okay, over the top um while you were fighting you would have noticed that every time you got the arm back if this arm was already set in too tight right you were clearing and by then the other arm was coming and you were never able to like progress okay which is why once the grip sets it's going to be a little harder so almost as it comes in i'm clearing now that his body is twisted enough that second arm is not going to be a problem for me because as that arm comes in i'm going to be able to twist him back to the other side okay because he's wound up like a spring and then i just uncoil him coil him uncoil him coil that that's all that's happening so that's easy work for you um 
Easier said than done, of course, because no fight, he's just going to keep coming back. You need more advantages than that, okay? So this time what we're going to do is we're going to clear and we're going to position ourselves slightly differently, okay? Where with this grip, I now own that angle. So if he tries to uncoil himself, he's a bit stuck. Not saying it's impossible, but it's going to hold him there for some time. As opposed to just placing this here, where I don't actually control his rotation. So I'm going to strip the grip off. And I'm going to throw my arm into the armpit. And on this side, I'm just controlling the wrist. Okay, and we're going to use the same thing to walk him down. Okay, and it's going to be a little harder for him to hold his ground in this case. Okay, because he has to fight you kind of in this direction, not face you head on. Alright, so the same drill, you push. You get your arm here and I'm still walking him down. Okay, and at this point, if this much happened, you can kind of be sure that he's not going to be able to strike because no punches are going to work when he is falling backwards. All right, so this is shoved up into his armpit, this portion of my uh, forearm, and the other arm, for now, we'll go with one grip, which is just my uh, middle finger and my thumb locked around his wrist. And I'm not holding on for dear life. It's just soft. Okay, I don't need to hold this, but this is shoved in. And my body is positioned under it. If I was here, then only my arm's holding him up. But the minute I position my body, he's going he's gonna to find it hard to like crunch down on it. And now I just have to walk. Okay, so peel off the grip. Set up the secondary grip, which is going to be called a Russian tie. Okay, and I'm just going to walk him down with that Russian tie, with the same footwork that you use. Okay, let's go. So as soon as I clear this, I'm getting into a squat. Okay, so make sure you do that and you don't chase that by loading your weight on them. He doesn't want, want to just accept it, right? That's, that's the premise of this entire thing. And especially if you're in self-defense, the guy is going to fight back, right? So when you do get this tie, I'm not going to just give him this because then I'm now not facing him anymore right so when he gets that I just kind of hold your ground a bit let him push you and we see what happens next okay uh, very often sometimes in self-defense maybe they try to grab your collar so if he tries to grab my is it safe there so I'm going to clear it almost at the word go and set it up okay and this could be the same thing for a tie he clears and we have this all right now <clears throat> at this point no matter what means you used to get to the Russian, okay, uh, you'll reach an important conjunct a conjuncture where he's going to want to pull this arm back to himself. And if I try to pull against it, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, eventually I'm going to lose him. Okay, so that's why pushing into him is so important. So when I get this arm and he tries to pull back, I merely push him. Okay, and that's why this grip doesn't need to be tight. I don't need to exhaust any energy, I merely need to follow him where he intends to go, right? So as soon as, let's say, I use this method, I can start pushing, okay, as he tries to pull this arm back to himself, okay? So this is the first part of creating pressure in our partner, okay? We're going to look at a very simple way to get our training partner down to the ground, um, and it's going to be off of creating pressure waiting until he applies enough pressure back against my technique and then relieving that pressure, okay? So, we got to the Russian tie and I'm going to push as I walk and maybe there's a wall behind him, uh, maybe there's the police station behind him, whatever it is, at some point he feels that, okay, I don't want to go anymore and he starts fighting back by holding his ground. So I'm pushing and he starts holding his ground. Now it's going to be hard to overcome that because he's assumed a posture which is going to be, which is going to take more effort to push through. Okay. And now you can break that by committing more of your weight onto him. But the cost of that is maybe you lose balance too. Okay. Instead, as soon as we've created enough pressure where I can't overcome it, I'm going to relieve that pressure. So push. I feel the pressure, I relieve it by using the same arm and I chop it down. Okay, uh, for time's sake, 
this reaction can get more and more sophisticated depending on how good he is at the sport. If this was self-defense, he would do exactly what Devo just did, which is get dragged all the way down to the hip. Okay, and this can get, this can become only to the knee, or it can become only sometimes to the palm. Uh, this could also happen in the street if the guy was heavier than you, but right now for time's sake, let's assume that you're able to drag him down to the mat completely. Okay, so you got to the Russian tie, you're pushing, you feel the weight back. Remember, I'm not bending at my waist, I'm just squatting down and hammering this into his elbow. Okay, uh, this much is enough if this happens. Okay, let's go. Again, feel the pressure. If he doesn't pressure back at all, like I would never be able to pull him to the ground. It's only when he holds his ground, can I pull. Okay, and the harder you pull, and again, your goal is to get his elbow away from his knee. Okay, so as he pressures back, I can kind of move my feet and drag him further down too, if I, if I so please. Okay. So play around with that. That's not the important bit. The important bit is feeling the pressure where you can't push back anymore, converting it into a drag by squatting down. Okay, let's go. So what I want you to do is get back to the position. So she pressures back, okay? I just want you to shuffle your feet slightly forward. Okay, and now pull her down. There we go, that's a lot better. Okay, because You're too close to actually drag her. You might end up pulling her to your leg. So you can kind of open up space. Yeah, you know, opening up space right now. I occupy the space that I want to pull it in. So if I and that's why I see most of you guys trying to drag him around. Instead, you can move out of the way. It's it's still the same movement. It's still the same squatting movement, but I'm using the floor to draw him down. Okay, so open up that space, pull him down to the ground. Yeah, that you don't have too much control over. But for the most part, if you get your positioning right you get to make up for whatever uh, whatever you couldn't anticipate there. So Maybe you end up a little them. forward, then you end up slightly behind him where you're controlling his head. So you want them to be as in your pocket? As perfect would be for me to like bind their arm in some way. We'll see what that looks like. Yeah. Right? As I'm pushing, they may not even be able to fight back that, that pressure as much. Okay, it's still kind of overcome it. Okay, that being said, if at all you do encounter pressure, this may be a bit awkward to pull them down, but you're already behind them. Okay, so this is out of the scope of what we want to do today, but uh, in the future, off of this, uh, maybe I have a little more angle, I can just get by and get behind him. Okay, and there are a host of things that can happen from there as well. Uh, but right now, Remember when we started the drill, he tried to stay as square as possible. So which means when his arm came in and I cleared and I went back, he squared up with me. You see? It's his best interest to stay facing me. So when I push and I get to this Russian, he'll still want to fight back by facing me. That's why this looks like this. Okay, so make sure you're at least turned and sort of chest to chest. You can never get like complete rotation, but you'll still fight that angle off. Okay, because the closer I am to the back, the riskier it gets for him. All right, just you can't kind of predict where he's gonna fall. Because everyone asks me like, where should he fall? I, I don't have an answer for that. Because it's based on how the subtleties of the position of how he's turned and so on and so forth. So I can never actually like gauge where he's gonna fall. So I push, he pressures back. I don't know where he's gonna fall. But I'm going to get back up, let him get back up, then pull him down. Now I know precisely where he's going to fall. Okay? So you let him get back up from here, just till this much. If his head comes up all the way, drag him is going to be difficult. If he comes up here, what should you do? Push. Continue pushing, recreate the scenario. Okay? But in the process of him getting up from here, his head is still down. Now you can be a bit more precise in where you drag him. Okay, so I want you to do a re-drag down to the mat, post the first one. So Russian, pull, he gets up, pull him. Okay, I just want you to stay behind him, that's good enough for now. Yeah? 
up, drag again. Okay, while dragging him, make sure that you're pulling his elbow away from his body. So I drag him once, let's go here. So I drag him down once, he gets back up, drag him and move his elbow away from his body. He drags me down, I kind of save myself, he drags me the second time, I'm completely uh, letting myself go. Okay, uh, just because this is what may happen on the street. Let's prepare for that scenario first before we do any technical wrestling from this position. We get here and then now we've got to do like more wrestling stuff. Okay, but remember in the street I would just like hit him here. Okay. Okay, again, partner has to go full flat for now. Uh, otherwise the next thing won't look the right way. Try to keep it natural. Drag, nice, that's okay too. That's okay too, but watch this again. Watch when I get dragged. That's perfect, Ramit. That's perfect. Okay, so I pressure back. I get dragged the first time and I stand back up. The second time I get dragged, I'm just getting myself completely extended. Okay? So I'd like to see that happen. So train uh, the bottom person must also train this just so that. Uh, when, when, when it's your turn to go offensive, they give you the right reaction too. Okay, so make sure that that's happening. Oh, that's why. So, what, what do you think happened there? You lost connection to the floor. And that's why you move this way. This is your main focus. Me getting him down to the floor is actually not. Right? Let's say I got till here. I pulled him and this has all happened. No big deal. I'm still in I'm still in position. So what are you gonna do next? There we go. You see how he pulled back? That is just human tendency to do that. So when he pulls back, I'm back in my posture. And now I do it better. So when he pressures back, now I pull and I do a better job. Uh, you can hurt your opponent and if it's concrete, that is also a problem for you. Uh, which is why we're not doing Nishita can above you. So, we're not doing a drag like this. So, for example, let's say I already did the first drag. He's coming up. I don't drag him like this. Because I actually don't know where he's going. Yes, I get him to the ground. But I've lost a bearing as to how he's falling. Um, where he's going to fall. The whole point of the second drag was to be more precise about it. Okay? And it shouldn't be at the cost of maiming him to a degree that I didn't expect. Okay, you, there are consequences for that too. Uh, which is why it's not so important to bring him to the ground. The control and base are more important. So which means after that first drag, he comes up. I'm still just dragging him this way. So I still know kind of how he's falling. But if I overcommit, so that first one, and let's say he comes up, and I overcommit him by doing this, I may lose balance. Remember, there might be a footpath here. I may step on it and I may get thrown over. So all of these things are something that you'll need to think of, which is why if I drag him this way, there can be any sort of like footpath. I'm not going to lose my bearing because I'm connected to the ground. But don't compromise by swinging. Yeah, spend time. Like, if for some reason I'm not able to drag, he's going to posture up. It's okay, walk him down again. You still have this position. Maybe from here he puts his hand on my chest. It's okay, push him back more. I'm still in control. But it's, it's keeping base. That's why we started the class with base. That trumps anything else that you want to do. It's more important that you're here than you get him to the ground. Okay? So let's keep this in mind and do a few more reps and we go to the last bit. Okay, but now, see, you're compromising your posture to bring him down. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But understand that when you start bringing your head down, so let's say uh, you have this, and you start bringing your head down, I have control over your head. Yeah. That's not favorable for yeah. you. But now, same grip, but now squat instead. Go into okay. a squat by pulling yeah. this. Squat, no, no, no. You see how it's tipping? That's not a squat. Go back. Okay. A squat is going straight down. Go straight, straight down as best you can. This, but yeah. with my arm. Squat. Now you see, I can't get your head. Yeah. There's nothing I can do. Yeah. And now you just crab walk in that direction. Oh. Pretty much. 
Ah. Nice job. Looking very good now. Okay. Again, posture. Posture is getting compromised. Stay in a squat. Stay in a squat. Okay, so Ranjit had an important uh, question. Uh, so this can be done in one move or in five moves. It's your choice. Okay. Uh, depending on your athletic ability depending on your size versus your opponent, right? If you're a big guy and you're fighting a small guy on the street, like sure, like you can just do it in one swift motion. Maybe you don't even need the push. Maybe you get the grip and just drag him to the ground, right? But as weight disparity starts to go towards even, then you need to go push and pull. Maybe you'll need like two reps of that. His weight goes up, then number of reps, maybe four times, you'll have to push and pull eventually to get him down. So you'll have to wear him out and doing this to somebody is extremely taxing. Do not underestimate that. Every time they lose their posture and they get it back, it is very taxing for them. Okay? And with time, their mind gets a bit adulterated with like thoughts of like, man, can I keep this going? And by then they start making mistakes and you can get them to the ground. Okay? The same is true when you're tired. If you're tired, you can't do the same thing in one move. Right? It's like doing your fourth set of squats was your first set of squats. You're going to be worn out. Right? If, if at all you fought for like five minutes or whatever it is, you are going to be some amount taxed in your, both your skeletal system and your muscular system. So which means you will have to do more reps. So keep that in mind, which is why don't get tied to the result. Be more worried about creating pressure. And that pressure is created only if you have base. Otherwise, all of this is out of the window and you have to go back to tossing him across the floor, which may or may not happen. Okay? So uh, moving on to the last bit. Assuming he fell down in that stretched position. Okay. We're just going to find one way to get control over him. Uh, I don't want him to get back up again. So right from here, as soon as I drag him, my arm's going to go around and I'm going to start binding this arm behind his back. Okay. And I'm going to reinforce that by putting his head to the floor. Okay. If he tries to get up now, try to get up, should be very difficult. And the way we're holding him down is this arm going through and pinning onto his back. Okay? The other thing that's happening is his arm is stuck behind my hip. This move could also be done this way. This works too. Okay? But for now, for simplicity, we're just going to keep it here. And I'm just going to pin his head down. So he will not be able to get up again. If he tries to post that other hand on the floor to get up, I can wrap him up completely. Okay? This is again, the objective is not necessarily to submit him or to break him. Uh, this is merely to control and subdue somebody, maybe until the authorities get there or whatever it is. Okay? Uh, strangling somebody is also illegal. Uh, <clears throat> you can't get booked for assault and stuff. So you're just subduing somebody. So we're not looking at any submissions or anything. We're going to get him down to the ground and just control. Okay? So once again, the grip that we're making is this arm going through and just placing it behind his back. Okay? So, drag him to the ground. He gets extended. I cover. First, I cover his hips before anything. And notice that my entry to the ground is soft. Okay? I'm not landing hard on him because it could be concrete. Instead, what's happening is from here, I fit myself into that position. My hips are still in, just like I would if I was standing, okay, just because I go here, it doesn't mean I'm trying to hug him this way. Hips are in. I'm just going to move this arm backwards, pin, and I pin the head. As soon as I feel him try to push up, I bind the second arm. That's it. And now, no matter who he is, he's probably not getting up. Okay, so let's try this out slowly. Maybe you guys can actually just start from this position. This arm may sometimes could have ended this way also, making your life a lot easier. But for now, let's have this so that you pull them back and then snake at the end. Okay? Let's go. Start from the ground and then put everything together. Go behind and through. Place it on the back. Pin. He tries to press up, bind the second arm. So I'm going to pull this out. And I'm going to lift, I'm going to lift it up first. 
so that my elbow is at the crook of his elbow. Okay, there are multiple ways to do this is called an armbar. Uh, it's not the same armbar that you do in Jiu Jitsu, it's more a form of control and honestly a true armbar because you're actually placing like a crowbar on him. So there's leverage to look for him. He needs to free his arm this way, which is like a very, very, very difficult to do. Okay, so I'm pulling it, getting my elbow in tight, and I'm moving my hip close so that this arm is stuck in my body. Okay, this could be done this way too. Right, this is also equally okay. Uh, if this happens, it's fine. But one thing I'd like to see is it's elbow to elbow and my chest placed over it. Wherever it may be, my chest is close to him. And I pin his head down. When he tries to get up, I get the second arm and it's the same thing. Elbow deep and my chest over him. Only now he can't get up. Right? There's no leverage to get up basically. So. Okay, so elbow deep, put your weight on it. Just like you would do with this Russian tie where you placed it in the armpit and you put your weight behind it. The same thing, the ground it happens slightly differently. You get to put your weight on them more blatantly. Standing position, putting weight on them can lead to problems, okay? So leave it to slightly more experienced guys to do that. Uh, and honestly, even when I say experience, it's not a Jiu guy, it's more like a wrestler. So given that like, it is better for you to hold your ground and fight this way and prevent bad things from happening. Maybe you don't have the most advantage uh, <clears throat> in terms of offense, but it's rinse and repeat that's getting the job done. Yeah? So when a guy is actually moving, is there a way for the body to get out? This particular thing, like if this much has happened, there's really not much that you can do. Like see, again, it all depends on how much you're willing to sacrifice in the process. A lot of people, see, the escape for this could be as simple as rolling and giving up this position. Maybe, right? But due to people's egos and whatever it is, the reason is they'll struggle here. They will struggle until they maybe even pass out due to exhaustion, right? Just because the ego would probably get in the way, right? But they can give up position and in many cases, but in a lot of cases, they don't even know that that's possible. They just fight. So there is a possibility of rolling, unless I'm in the possibility. Uh, there is a possibility, but everything can be stopped. So now we're getting into like more finer points of control there. I can't just be stationary with my weight. If you notice, we were moving to control somebody. It's no different on the ground. It's constant movement. Yeah. So let's finish up with this. In me, what do you think is missing? Okay, what else? Why am I not able to push? Uh, Hips are not under. Now see, I lifted him up. Now his posture has changed. He's never able to get it. But he, when he really does that, when he really does that, the pull becomes really strong. So position yourself to do work. See, one important thing when it comes to fighting is this, I'm very close to throwing him. Okay? Rather too close. Which means I'm open to other counters. Because you see, to hold this position, I have to lean in. Sorry? In a bunch of ways, but I'm overcompromised, right? Anytime you're throwing somebody, you are actually compromising a little bit of that base and structure. You have to, right? So there's no way that you're getting away from that. So given that, you have to try and stay as much as possible in the middle of a fight. There are two extremes that I can go in. One extreme is this way. One extreme is this way. Both leads, if I go to the complete extreme, he gets thrown. But can I get there is the question. Because if I, if I commit myself to this position, I've given myself too many like uh, loopholes in the technique. Exactly, he could drag me, he could do a bunch of things. But now I'm in the middle. So which means if he starts going behind me, now I can throw him. If he starts going too much in front of me, now I can throw him. That's the game, right? So that's why I want to stay in the middle as much as possible and then work this. Yeah, because this allows me to wear and tear him. Where if I go to an extreme, it doesn't allow wear and tear, it only allows throw or only allows submission, something. There's no time limit. So when there's a time limit, automatically the rules push towards offense because they want entertainment. So which means rather fighting this way here, yes, I can't throw him but he can't throw me too. 
That's what's good about this. But it's no good for competition because I'm not on the offensive. I may get penalized for this because I'm playing a slightly passive game. But if I start going here, now I'm going in the offense. But in order to go to the offense, I need to sacrifice my defense. That's how it works. The time you get, the time when you throw a punch is when you're most vulnerable to get punched yourself. So it's the same thing. Okay? 